next issue or case we're considering PB 14 24 during the year. Now, I have to say, we already considered this on Mr. Uh, it will depend on the two of you. You asked for the opportunity to make a statement. If you don't know why, why they asked, then I'll let them go first. And then you okay, yeah. I will try to respond to the best of my oh, ability okay. then. Since you, you requested the opportunity. I did. Thank you, Dr. Reeves. Thomas Rowe, on behalf of Jeremy Deere. Um, and uh, oh. thank, for having this, thank you for having this matter put on the agenda. Um, as this board knows, um, this matter was remanded back to you uh, pursuant to an order um, from Judge Campbell back in November 29th. And um, back at the end of last month, on the 27th, the an opposed motion extend the deadline by which this board is supposed to respond uh, to Judge Campbell's order was submitted and um, subsequent to that yes, the order was issued by Judge Campbell granting this board 90 days to respond to the general order. And there are really two issues that I think need to be addressed um, by this board and, and frankly a decision needs to be done which is in our reading of the judge's order, he's remaining it back to the board that was involved in the decision that the board made back in late 2015 regarding Mr. Deere. Um, the obvious difference is that the board that exists today is not the board that reviewed that matter, that heard testimony or arguments uh, before it by myself and the city's prior attorney on that matter. And, um, you know, our question is, is it proper for a new, mem new, new board member to be involved in that process in compliance with Judge Campbell's order, um, and what of the vacancy? And, you know, our position is that with the order being, um, from Judge Campbell being set back and directing the board to do certain things, um, it precludes Mr. Pendergrast from being involved because he wasn't involved in that initial order. And, um, from our analysis, what's proper is that the three remaining board members that are here are the ones that are responsive, and if possible, um, call back Mr. Pfeiffer and Mr. Manning and have them be involved to provide that response to the judge's order as requested by the, by the court. And we agree it's a peculiar situation. It is, it is. The reality is this board is not the board that rendered that decision. Um, you know, I'm sure Mr. Pendergrass is perfectly qualified to be on the board, but he wasn't involved in that decision. He wasn't involved in the extensive briefing review of that case, and we think it would be improper for him or the fifth board member um, to be involved. And, you know, the obvious difference now, of course, is the constitution of the board is different than what it was back then. I mean, we had two representing labor and two representing management, and the fifth one's selected by vote of you, but again, I mean, Mr. Pfeiffer was the one that wrote the um, recommendation that was ultimately taken to well, the court. It's very tempting for me to jump in right now, but I, I, I shouldn't because I <laughs> promised you I can't yeah. respond. But I do want to, I, I want all of us to, to comment on it. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Samantha Holtz on behalf of the City of Albuquerque and the Albuquerque Police Department. Um, with regard to the issue of remanding something back to a board, you all are a quasi-judicial body. Judicial bodies change compositions all the time. <coughs> judges retire, uh, panels of judges on appellate courts retire. Things get sent back down, and the court functions, and you guys should function as a quasi-judicial body, as any other board would function. Um, I like to say the board is the board is the board. So it is the city's stance that it is not inappropriate for new members of the board to come on, to be composed of the board, and to make these decisions on remand. Um, this happens all the time. It happens in various courts, and it happens in various quasi-judicial bodies, etc. Um, the direction from the court is to look at the record and to tell it, if possible, why, you made, why the board has made the decision it has, and the record still is as it was back when you guys first made the decision. So I don't believe it's inappropriate and that as a quasi-judicial body going forward and functioning in full as either is a five-member board would not be okay to this matter. Well, I'll take the first reply and my colleagues also respond. You're, it is a peculiar situation. It's a 3-2 decision. And 
I was part of the three. Mr. Byford, who's now off the board, is, was also part of that decision. I would um, advise you, though, that Mr. Byford didn't write the decision alone. The, the three of us uh, discussed this issue. Well, the five of us discussed it. I think mean, we had some spirited discussion. And, uh, we took the three to two votes, so it, it, was a, it, it took a while. My other thought is, I don't see any way of calling Mr. Pfeiffer or Mr. Manning back. I mean, they're, they're no longer on the board and we can't compel them. Mr. Manning wouldn't want to get part of it anyhow. I, I doubt Mr. Holland, he's made his position clear. He, he voted against it. So I don't think he wants to review all of that material again, but he can speak for himself. So I, I don't know what the answer is. But as I interpret it, we, the, particularly the, the two remaining ones, will have to write a decision. I don't think Mr. Pendergast can. I mean, we reviewed the entire hearing, listened to all the tapes that you recommended that we listen to, and I don't think he can go back through them and do all of that. Go ahead. I, I guess my question for the police from the city's position as I understood the judge's order, it was for clarification. Not for a redecision or a relook or a remand or whatever else you want to say. It's just for clarification of how that board came to that decision. It is clarification saying that there were there were parts of his decision where he says, you know, you have made certain determines about somebody's credibility and without pointing out points in the record. And so um, he has asked that this board go back and look at the record too to provide information to him as to how they've reached that decision. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Grover, uh, assume, if you will, that, that Mr. Pfeiffer were willing to take part in, a, in another proceeding um, and we were to invite him. I mean, do you think that would have, do you think that would be legally valid to do that, where he's no longer a, a member of this board to come back and take part in a decision? I don't necessarily think that means it would be invalid if they were to be involved. I think it, perhaps it would be seeking permission from the court to make sure everything is um, being done in a manner consistent with the court's wishes. So, you know, that's why I'm saying we're in a peculiar situation. And in the truest sense, to respond to the court's order, you know, remands this matter for the board to amend its decision to set out specific what portions of the record it reviewed to set out the specific factual findings in support of its determinations and conclusions and to set out any additional findings of fact and conclusions of a lot consistent with uh, the court's opinion I mean the true sense of complying with the court's order it should be the board that was involved in making that decision do you have any legal authority for that? I haven't found legal authority either way, either against it or for it. That's why I suggest, I mean, you know, one very easy remedy is for Mr. Pendergrass to recuse himself and just simply not uh, partake in it. And, you know, that's, I believe, within his discretion and his ability to do. And then we're left with the three of you um, who were involved in the decision, and I think that may be amenable. Um, to Mr. Deer. The ratio more or less stays the same. It's two that were involved versus one in management rather than three and two. Um, it's still not their board, but I think that you know takes away um, the variable of having a new board member involved. Now, uh, Dr. Reeves, you said one thing that I was a little, bit, a little confused about. You indicated that would be just the two of you, so are you, is your term up, Mr. Hall? Or, or, no, so you would be involved. Yeah, I think it's through September. Yeah. Okay. No, he's involved. Okay, that's what I figured. So, um, since he voted against it the first time, I'm not sure that he would want to be involved. I, I, I mean, he is. I welcome his participation. I, I mean, what you guys do behind closed doors is what you guys do. I mean, that's behind the curtain. But from our perspective, I mean, I think, and I, I'm sure the city would feel the same way that if it were just management, if it were just labor representatives on the board, then they would be wondering, well, how can we, you know, fairly satisfy the court's order if it's only the people that voted for, you know, the given employee at the time? 
you know, given that the situation is that you know, we have two and one rather than three and two, I, I think that's a fair remedy. And you know, I, to me, you know, the simplest scenario to, to remedy is for uh, Mr. Pendergrass to recuse himself from it, and then that's where it goes. I have no comments. Well, we certainly can take it up. Say one last thing. Right. Is that maybe you know the legal authority question is maybe there isn't a clear case law, but there is definitely procedures that are followed by judicial bodies and quasi judicial bodies, and it is not that when a new composition comes along of a panel of judges that they should adapt. They are there to do their job to to come up with a recommendation under the composition as they sit. Um, and we have the second issue. Oh, okay. the second okay. issue okay. is that um, as the board weighs making this decision, part of um, the responsibility that the court assigned to the board was, you know, to review the specific factual findings and record of this matter and lay out why it was uh, the board issued the recommendations that it did, and. As you recall, one of the issues that um, was brought to the board's attention at the time that uh, hearing officer Bingham's decision was made was this issue regarding an IA report that was not produced by the city during the merits hearing on this matter. Okay. And we had argued that Mr. Bingham, first of all, the city, not this, not uh, Ms. Holtz, but uh, Ms. Levy, um, improperly withheld material that was subject to production and discovery in this case. It had to do with an underlying IA investigation that, in fact, was the triggering event for this entire matter that led to the city's act action upon Mr. Deer. And during the course of um, months of litigation, um, we've been able to get bits and pieces of this IA report. And it's our position that I-9914, this is the report, and it is referred to um, in the record in this matter by the chief should be included into this matter. It's thus far been precluded from this case, and it's an underlying, absolutely important element of this matter because it's it's the case that led to the investigation um, that this department did that led to the termination of Mr. Deere. And what we've determined from the parts that we've that were presented thus far is that the department did an investigation onto the use of cameras by personnel, and guess what? Despite doing that big investigation, there was no determination that there was any order. So what we want the board to consider is including I-9914 into the record of this case. Did, did Mr. Bingham rule on that? And if so, was there anything in his report to this board on that ruling? He only just denied our motion to have the city produce it. Offered no opinion, no analysis. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's been an issue ever since um, we became aware of this secret IA um, when testimony was presented on it. And that's what led to our, uh, Mr. Deere's requesting it from Ms. Levy, and she made the, the, the incredulous position that there was no discovery in these hearings. And then that led to motion practice to have the city you know, compelled to produce it, and Mr. Bingham refused to have it produced. And, you know, when we have a document that Chief Eden uh, refers to, and in fact references I-9914 as being the fundamental investigation that led to this order, or led to the allegations of this order, um, it was improper that it was withheld. And I mean, now we know why, because throughout this entire investigation, there was no reference to any order. Can I take a look at that? I would like to see it first and make sure. Yeah, certainly. I'm not so sure we should consider any evidence. Okay. I, 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 believe we we should, I believe we should not. We, what we'd like the board to do is make a decision on that, so at least there's a record regarding that decision. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm objecting. Is it public information? <laughs> I'm um, objecting to the fact that 
the eyes are, con are confined to the record, and this actually has to do with a memo pertaining to that particular IA, not the one that's at issue before this court. Well, this is part of the record that's in front of you. Okay, it's like page so I would actually like to be able to respond to this. Yeah. Well, I, I think we should take this up to the executive session. What do you think? Well, I just have a question. Are these IA reports public information? Can somebody do a FOIA request? An IPR, so, yeah, yeah. the IPR request, it, yeah. it depends on what's released. Certain things are redacted, certain things are released. Um, may I respond? Um, regarding the discovery issue, um, the discovery and the request for this particular file was requested, I believe, like days before the hearing. It, it was untimely and it was not pertinent or relevant to the IA investigation that was done regarding Mr. Dewar's on body camera usage and that led to his termination. And that is why it was not produced and it was not considered by the hearing officer. Um, and to go back and reopen the entire record for an irrelevant piece of information or material, um, I would say would be an ill use of time of this board and of the personnel work process. So I would object to it. I'd like to respond to uh, uh, board member Julianne's question about whether or not it's public record. Mr. Deer filed a petition for writ of mandamus under IPRA to actually get this file, and he prevailed in that matter. In fact, Judge Deacon determined that the city violated IPRA in withholding the production of aspects of this file. Um, the city has through Friday to comply with aspects of that order, and they've been sanctioned and um, have ongoing sanctions because of their non-compliance with that order thus far. I mean, they've been incurring fees since January 26th. So there had been an argument that the file was um, not public record, but the court has determined otherwise. So. I don't believe that the, the, I don't believe that the exact ruling, but the ruling on an IPRA matter is, is not something that is reflected of this court. Thank you. So this is what they do with every shooting, you know, where their SOPs followed, what led to it, whatever. So when uh, Aaron Hawks was shot, okay, they did an investigation of you know, any number of officers, uh, Mr. Deere included, but also the Sergeant Advisor, the K-9 officer involved, um, other officers at the scene. And part of their analysis with every shooting administrative investigation is were there any SOP violations? And part of the deal with this, which you, if you remember at the time, was Lapel camera, lapel camera, lapel camera. We're, we're you know, um, April 2014. DOJ is here. Their their report is imminent. Lapel camera videos. That's that's the name of the game that was going on. And so our vast focus, um, as we understand this investigation, was you know, lapel cameras used. If so, um, were there any problems? If they weren't used, why not? So obviously, if they're doing an investigation into the officer's use of the Pell camera, you're telling me that at the conclusion of this investigation, they wouldn't have determined whether or not there was a standing order for this officer or any other officer um, to record each and every encounter at that the they would identify. Wasn't. Our contention is that there wasn't one. Um, I believe we proved that there wasn't one. That this is an after-fact fabrication by Eden to do a knee-jerk reaction to use this officer as a sacrificial right. man to say, look, we've had it with people not using cameras and we're going to fire someone to make the message out to the rest of the troops. And this report, there's nothing in it about it seems like um, the order more than other than the standard yeah. SMP is covering the use of the, of the cameras. Yeah. So. Uh, you want to go down again? Sure, sure. Do you want to do it? He's not going to say a word, but I mean... Okay. Um, are we okay right here? Yeah. Sorry, Slide you can keep it.
Okay, so you've been waiting what a long time to get these? Um, and we're still collecting them is what it comes down to. I mean, we asked for this report during his initial hearing on this entire matter. And in 2015? Yeah, and during the merits hearing in 2015. Um, we were denied it, even though it was the primary um, investigation that led to this alleged order coming into place, and that's under Eden's testimony. Okay, Everyone else says, you know, there's no order, but Eden says there's no order. Um, we wanted a copy of it. We were denied it. The hearing officer denied its production. We continued to make uh, noise about, no, it's completely relevant. It's what led to this investigation that resulted in this officer's termination. And we were denied it. Um, we prevailed in the um, hearing. The city appealed it to district court. And while during the time that I was in district court, we did a IPRA action for production of this report. And the city has made arguments through council that they can't produce it because it's an IA case. Well, we all know that there are aspects of any given IA case that are subject to public records production. But they, for some reason, didn't want to produce this. And then they made the argument that, well, it's not complete. It's not concluded. There's nothing in IPRA that says because the investigation is not complete or concluded. They can withhold it. So we filed a mandamus action and we prevailed against the city. Um, and Judge Bacon issued an order back in late January determining that the city had violated the Inspection of Public Records Act and had to produce aspects of this report that they had withheld. So we are February 8th and have yet to produce those aspects of the report, which are the audio recordings of witnesses have investigated, interviewed during the report. So we're still waiting for it, but we know what it says. We know what it says. We've read depositions by personnel in other cases where they refer to the report. We even there's even uh, you know, sworn testimony by Chief Eden himself where he says he's never reviewed I-9914. When in fact we have a memo then signed by him where he did an extensive review of I-9914. So we lied under sworn testimony. So it's pretty clear what this report means, why the city has withheld it, and why it's so relevant to this case, which indisputably shows that there was never any order. The department did an investigation prior to this ham hocked investigation that led to his subsequent termination that shows there's no order for him to report the encounter. There's already, you guys already won his reinstatement though, correct? Right. So, to reopen this, you're just hoping to shut down any appeals? Well, the city, we won the reinstatement. The city appealed that decision to district court. Judge Campbell took the pleadings in that case and then remanded it back to this board um, to supplement their findings with more detail, essentially, is what uh, he did. And what we viewed is fine. If you're going to do that, then we want a full record of this matter at your fingertips, which includes, you know, this report. Um, that they that we try to get into the record back during the hearing and were denied because it just conclusively shows that there's no order upon this officer to report each and every account. Will there be, um, I mean, obviously, if they, they, since they appealed it, there will be a re review, I guess, of everything? Well, the judge did that, and in, in reviewing the record, what the judge said was, I need to see more from this board as to why they made the decision that they did. It was a fairly thorough analysis, much more thorough than I, any others I've seen come from the court. And basically what he's asking from that board is, you know, supplement your decision with um, citations in the record and more facts so I know that you just didn't pull this decision out of the air. Now, they made a fairly comprehensive um, decision in their ultimate finding in this matter to reinstate him. Um, apparently, the judge just wants to be, see it so that all four corners of the, uh, the order fully detailed. That happens behind closed doors, right? That's why right, you don't doors. even know That's right. what their reasons were. We'll know what they file and submit to the court. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure the city will put forward objections to it. We'll have an opportunity to respond to that. And ultimately, um, the court will provide a decision probably late summer. I mean, they have they have to do this by May 1st. And as you can tell, there's issues, which is who is going to be involved. And we, we're optimistic that they're going to make the right decision, which is the remaining three members that are in there that were on the board when they made that decision will be the ones involved to respond to the court's order um, and not uh, the new board member or the subsequent one that they're apparently voting on now. Paul and voted against. Um, so we wait, right? That's it. 
It's a. Uh, you don't know it's a, if they're going to oh, include this now, or do you? No, we don't know. They'll make a decision as What's to their whether. Time they'll probably they'll make a decision today. Oh. That's what they'll do. So they'll decide how they're going to who is going to respond to the court's order and whether or not they're going to um, allow for the supplementation supplement, um, supplementation of the record with this you know the secret IA that the city didn't want to um, produce now. That doesn't mean Mr. Deer here is in still pursuing remedies in the court um, for records relating to this matter. I mean, we still have this order that the city has failed to comply with with Judge Bacon, which they have till Friday to comply with, and we filed another mandamus action regarding other um, police matters involving uh, Mr. Deer that I think the hearing set uh, sometime in March or to be set, it'll, but it'll be it'll be soon. Yes. This all gets cleared up, does he even want his job back? Or is this just so he can get employment in another place? No, I, he still wants to be an officer with the Albuquerque Police Department. And um, I think we have to absolutely applaud him for that because this is a department in a cascading cri state of crisis. I mean, there's, there's no disputing that. And um, we need good officers from the department and he fully should be back in the department. But his role will be, you know, remains to be seen. And of course, we're in an election year, so the question is whether or not the Barry administration has kicked this can down the road long enough to the point where they're not the ones faced with this situation and pass the buck to the next administration. Um, we're hoping the next administration will certainly be an objective and fair administration rather than an agenda driven administration like what we've got here, which has led to the absolute decimation of the police department for like this. Anything else? No. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah. It's good. 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 It's good.